Hi everybody and welcome to this month's webinar. Uh, this evening we're going to focus on uh, joint health and really focus more on um, when to be directing people towards the new LQHA Plus versus the Optimum, our existing Optimum Flex product. So I think it's important to start out with the skeleton and there are 200 and you'll notice that a lot of these slides have a lot of text on them which isn't usually how I do these do my slides but for you dealers I wanted you to have the information not have to frantically write down and I want you to be able to use this print these out <clears throat> and actually use them you know if people are asking questions you you have it all written down so um, that's kind of the the reasoning for the a lot of text on the slides. So 205 bones in the horse's skeleton and 20 of these bones are in each foreleg and 20 in each hind limb. Um, for a grand child, there's 80 bones in the horse's limbs. If we think about the joints, there are different types of joints. There are synovial joints and we will come back to these because these are the most important when it comes to feeding a joint supplement. These are the movable joints. These are the ones most apt to sustain injury or be afflicted by disease because these are the moving parts. An example of a synovial joint is the knee, uh, which actually contains three joints or, and multiple bones. In a manner of speaking, the synovial joints are the horse's ball bearings or the, um, the synovial joint consists of two bony ends, which are covered in cartilage, we'll see that in some pictures, that are both covered in Arctic, and the cartilage is smooth and resilient, but it's got some bounce in it. So that, that, that smoothness acts as a frictionless, so that we don't want to get friction in that joint, but that cartilage on the ends of the bone also acts as a bit of a shock absorber. Um, each joint capsule contains an inner lining called the synovial membrane, and that secretes synovial fluid that lubricates the joints. And it's the synovial membrane that can be perforated or damaged and allow that synovial fluid to leak out. There are cartilaginous joints. Now we will go back to the synovial joints because they're the most important, as I mentioned, but let's talk about the other types of joints. So the cartilaginous joints, they slightly move or they're immobile, depending on the bones invo involved. The cartilage joints are united by fibrocartilage, so a lot of collagen fibers. Um, hyaline cartilage, which is a bluish or white or both. So you're gonna see this, that hyaline cartilage in those younger animals. But an example of this is the connective tissue, tissue between the vertebrae. So the vertebrae have slight movement, but not as much movement as say a knee joint, for example. And then there are fibrous joints. These are completely immobile, they don't move. Um, they're bound by fibrous tissue that ossifies, which means hardens into bone as the skeleton matures. An example of these joints would be in the skull. You know, we have different plates in the skull and any of you that have had a baby know that the baby's head, for example, has that hole in the top of it allowing for expansion of the brain and that those bones grow over, but there are seams, there are seams in those bones that connect them together. So where, let's, we'll go back to these synovial joints. So where are the synovial joints? We're looking at the stifle, the hock, the fetlocks, the pastern, and the knee. A little into the shoulder, but primarily these lower extremities are these synovial joints that are going to be nourished by the joint supplements that we feed. So if we're getting pain or inflammation in any of these joints, that's where we're gonna start looking for a joint supplement. So there's several components in these synovial joints. Well, there are these ligaments that prevent the, the, the joint from moving sideways. So let's take the knee, for example. 
we want it to just act like a lever. We don't want it to twist on itself because that's going to cause damage. But we just want one action of movement. So there are these collateral ligaments that are on the outsides so that we don't get that cross-sectional movement. Synovial fluid, now that's the break fluid, so to speak. It fills the space between the bones and provides lubrication and also feeds the cartilage so that the cartilage doesn't die. Something's got to hold all that in there and that's the joint capsule. The synovial membrane is just inside that joint capsule and that feed, that regulates joint fluid. So if it starts to get a little dry, it secretes more. And the articular cartilage is on the very ends of the bone and it's soft and it covers the ends of the bone so that there's not bone on bone action, but it offers a cushion, a shock absorber. So you've seen this picture before. I like this picture. I think it really breaks it down quite nicely. On the very outside, we've got the horse's hair and skin, and right underneath that, we have these collateral ligaments, the light brown on the outside of these collateral ligaments that are going to stop this joint from going sides, sideways. Then we have in blue here, the, the darker of the blues, the joint capsule. I'm going to go up from the bottom. The joint capsule there, and that's kind of going to be the shell around this joint holding everything in. The next one up is the articular cartilage. That's the light blue, uh, depicted by the light blue on your screen. And you can see it's on the ends of the bone. Um, in a young growing horse, remember, we would have had that hyaline cartilage would have been back up kind of if we go to the very top. Um, and we see the word bone there, and you see where the end of that arrow hits the bone, there might have been a hyaline cartilage running right across there, which is the growth plate. But remember, as those bones ossify, harden, turn cartilage into bone, those growth plates go away. So this is an adult um, joint. But we've got that articular cartilage on the ends of the joint. Then in the green, we have the synovial fluid. That's the lubrication inside the joint. And then that kind of orangey dark yellow is the synovial membrane. The synovial membrane sits right inside that joint capsule and it's responsible for regulating the amount of synovial fluid that's in there. So if that synovial membrane gets inflamed or damaged, then it's not going to be feeding in, it's not going to be secreting enough synovial fluid. If the joint capsule gets damaged, then that synovial fluid is just going to leak out. <clears throat> so the joint structure is designed to absorb the concussion and permit the leg movement. The two bony ends, as you saw, are encased with that cartilage and the collateral ligaments are really tough fibers that attach to the sides of the bone um, within that capsule and they're stabilizers. Um, ligaments are made up of things like collagen. There are proteins and B vitamins that are really important for um, supporting those ligaments. Also some minerals, copper and zinc. Um, then you've got things like the cruciate ligament, which you think when people think about the cruciate ligament, you think about that in your knee. Well, the horse's stifle is their knee, and that's where their cruciate ligament is. Other ligaments outside the joint cavity also lend a little bit of support. <clears throat> so the synovial, the outer part of the joint capsule, now we looked at the pictures, now I'm kind of giving you a little bit more of a description here. The outer part of the joint capsule is a fibrous layer. Um, and the inner part of that synovial membrane that lines the side of the joint capsule, that's where the synovial cells sit, where the synovial fluid is secreted. So we have that more fibrous, tough layer on the outside and that's more soft and slimy on the inside. Um, <clears throat> and the ends of the bone are covered in that, that cartilage. Um, we mentioned that synovial membrane we don't want that synovial membrane to get inflamed at all now what's going to cause inflammation in that synovial membrane repetitive movement doing the same thing over and over again any of you get sore ankles or knees when you run on a treadmill it's because you're doing the exact same thing every time and you're getting 
you're getting joint capsule inflammation, synovial membrane inflammation. Our joints are the same as horses. Um, when you look at synovial fluid, it's kind of like the consistency of raw egg whites, so clear and sticky. <clears throat> but if you rub, if you put egg white on your fingers and you rub it together, rub your fingers together, it's really a little slimy. <clears throat> and so it really helps. It's not only lubricating, but it's thick. So the synovial fluid itself also acts as a little bit of a cushion in that joint. Um, an important component now, here's where we get down to the components of that synovial fluid. So we've, we've said that synovial fluid is absolutely critical. We know that it's to nourish that cartilage on the ends of the bone. It's lubrication, it's thick and viscous, and we want it to stay in there and keep that joint healthy. Well, what is in synovial fluid? Hyaluronic acid. So that is the reason why we say that hyaluronic acid is the key element in your joint supplements and certainly need at least 150 milligrams per day, if not more. There are lots of different names. People call it sodium hyaluronate or hyaluronin. Um, but that is what gives, that is the key ingredient in synovial fluid that gives the joint its lubrication capacity. Now I've seen just straight hyaluronic acid in a little jar and it's very goopy. If you've ever made slime with your kids, it's just like white slime. Um, when disease strikes a joint, there's often a depletion of the hyaluronic acid. Um, and be that because we've got inflammation in the synovial tissue and it's not secreting that synovial fluid, which is full of hyaluronic acid or it's leaking out. Um, but for whatever reason, if you have depleted hyaluronic acid, it means that the joint's ability to function properly for movement and, and to absorb that concussion, it's com compromised and we're going to start to see damage in that joint. So in young horses, when we're doing a lot of this repetitive training, young race horses, for example, what do they do? They go around and around and around a track or they run on a treadmill. Everything is repetitive concussion. You're training young barrel horses. They're doing the same pattern. You're working on turns. Um, so you're putting a lot of stress on that synovial tissue. Um, so hyaluronic acid for those young horses is absolutely critical. Those young horses don't have damage in the joint yet. They don't have osteoarthritis, which we'll look at a little later on. They don't have breakdown of the cartilage. They simply have inflammation of the synovial capsule so they're not making hyaluronic acid as effectively as they should be. Um, there's a second method for lubricating the joint as well. Um, there's also fluid, some of the synovial fluid, so that cartilage is porous and so it will absorb that synovial fluid into the cartilage and when you put pressure on the cartilage then it'll squeeze that that juice out, the, the fluid out, and then when you take the pressure off, it sucks it back in. It acts like a sponge. When you're wringing it out, it's putting the pressure on the joint and letting tension off um, and allowing it to reabsorb. So that aids in the cushioning of capacity of those joints. You've got jumping horses, for example. You know, we when we think about futurities, we use the word futurity, we think often about our Western disciplines. But take away the word futurity and call it young horse classes because that's what it is. We're doing it in all Western disciplines. We're doing it in dressage. We're doing it in jumping. Um, all breeds, all disciplines seem to have young horse classes these days where we're really expecting that young horse to put a lot of pressure on its joints. Um, so those young horses really need to have some kind of support. And in the past, anyone who's heard me speak before, I was hesitant to start doing the optimum flex because there's no joint damage there per se. But now that we've got the LQHA+, plus, and we're delving deeper into what damage is being done in those young horses' joints, it's pure and simple about hyaluronic acid and getting it into them in a really effective manner. So 
looking at this liquid joint supplement, the liquid hyaluronic acid supplement that we've come out with. This is really good for young horses. So what is the damage that can occur in the horse's joint? Um, and it really can be categorized into four distinct phases synovitis and capsulitis. These are pure and simple, just inflammation. Inflammation in that synovial tissue or in the joint capsule. If those are not corrected and they're allowed to progress, we have inflammation, which is oxidative stress, which means damage, right? That is going to progress to degenerative joint disease or DJD and then osteoarthritis. Um, and we'll look at those a little bit more closely. So synovitis, it's inflammation of the synovial membrane. Anytime you have itis, it's just inflammation. The primary cause of synovitis is overstretching of the synovial membrane during demanding exercise, swelling to an increase due to an increase in joint fluid production is the most obvious sign. This accumulation of fluid is called joint effusion. If you've heard the, the word effusion before, it's just um, an excess buildup of fluid, fluid on the joints. Common in racing thoroughbreds, they're young babies. Other horses work strenuously and it's that constant, same, same exercise. And it can usually be calmed down with layoff from strenuous exercise, but we can try to avoid it by doing correct exercises, not doing everything same, 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 not running a horse constantly on the same circle, but also feeding things like hyaluronic acid that are going to help control the tissue damage um, in that joint. So you can see on the left, we've got the horse knee, and you can see the swelling in the knee, and it's just synovitis, it's swelling of that synovial capsule. And here, this is this is actually a person's leg, a person's knee, but we've got swelling there. Looks like it's right above the knee, um, but it's swelling of that increased fluid here. In if you've, people, you've heard people say, "You've got I've got fluid on my knee," and that's just increased synovial fluid in there, and it's increased that synovial fluid because there's inflammation and the joint thinks, "Wow, well, there's inflammation." Um, that I, I need to I need to bring more nutrients to the area to try and clear that inflammation. Capsulitis is really just inflammation of the joint capsule, the outer layer. Remember, I said the outer layer was more fibrous than the inner layer. Layer of the synovial membrane is what's secreting the synovial fluid. So if we have inflammation of the actual fibrous joint capsule. Um, that is capsulitis, and it's typically they work together, they occur together, synovitis and capsulitis. Now, if that's not correct, if synovitis or capsulitis goes untreated, we end up causing damage. Inflammation, there is a reason why the body has this mechanism of inflammation. It's to bring blood to the area, it's bringing fluid to the area, it's to protect that tissue, bring nutrients to the area to try and heal or fix whatever was causing the issue. But if we as the owners and caretakers of these horses continue to do that exercise and don't, number one, rest them when they get swelling, then the swelling is just going to progress and progress and get worse and worse and worse. And then the swelling itself is also harmful. So swelling is a good thing in short period, in short bursts. So if this synovitis goes untreated, it causes damage to the cartilage on the ends of the surface. This deterioration of the cartilage is the next stage of articular breakdown. DJD or degenerative joint disease is characterized by chronic progressive degeneration of the joint cartilage. And it's found most frequently in the fetlock and the knee, but sometimes we see it in the pastern and hock as well. Um, primary reasons, primary things to lead that lead to degener degenerative joint disease is repeated bouts of synovitis without rest. It's causing the quality of that joint fluid to be decreased until it's watery. So now it's not thick and slimy, it's just like water. Well, you put water between two surfaces and it has a little bit of effect, 
um, but it certainly doesn't have, you don't put water in your brakes. You put oil in your brakes to help with that um, lubrication, right? Um, recurring and excessive compression of that cartilage that is associated with speed landing after a jump or quick stops. So let's just say we've got a young futurity reining horse or um, barrel horse or cutting horse where we're doing a lot of sideways lateral movement, a lot of quick stops. You've got a young warm blood. Warm bloods we know already are slow to mature and then we're doing jumping with them and you just don't want to do repetitive jumping. Um, repetitive movements, the cartilage becomes rough and flattened, losing its ability to withstand that compression. Um, so what separates then degenerative joint disease from osteoarthritis? Osteoarthritis is what comes next and that is when we actually have changes in the bone that compromise the joint. So now, so we have just for swelling. First of all, these joint issues start with swelling in the membranes around the joint. And then DJD is in the cartilage and then osteoarthritis is progressing into the bone. Um, and these changes severely impede the mobility and soundness of the horse, the inflammation, the bone damage can be, consider can be considerable. There are several types of arthritis in a horse, but most common are this osteoarthritis, which is in the bone, infectious arthritis, which we've had an infection, or traumatic. So let's say you, you know, you really had a, a, a broke a bone and then the healing back can cause arthritis as well. That's a traumatic arthritis. Or you get an infection in the bone and the healing back can cause arthritis. everybody can still hear me okay my headphones started going out a little bit um, so let's take a look at this slide here let's take a look at this slide now this is looking at arth osteoarthritis and if we look at the number one that's bone spongy bone number two remember that's the cartilage on the ends now let's look at number three First starts out with the thinning of the cartilage. So we've had inflammation in the end, in that joint capsule and now we've got the thinning of that cartilage because we're, that synovial fluid's now not feeding that cartilage. So we've got thinning of that cartilage. Then if we go to four and five, we see actual cartilage remnants start to float around in that joint and destruction of that cartilage that's on the ends of that bone. If we progress a little further, osteoarthritis can really progress up into that bone and you can see we have that cartilage fragments have come off and we've got damage up into the end of the bone. We can have bone cysts and then um, that but those bone fragments will actually also float around in the joint capsule. This is going to be in older horses. So what's the common cause of arthritis? It's caused by the slow wear and tear on that cartilage over time. The compression, the stressful wear away of that protective cartilage causes um, it's arthritis. Repetitive and excessive force on the joint can wear it down. Physical injury which causes inflammation. Now repetitive exercise will cause inflammation as well. So you've got to be, you've got to be, you know, there's all things we can feed, but you've also got to be cognizant of the training program that these horses are going through. That they're not just doing the same thing every single day. Poor conformation also can cause abnormal forces where, where, the, where the strain is on their knee or their fetlock can be changed due to the poor conformation. An infection, bacterial infection, that's septic arthritis, um, that will stimulate a really strong in, inflammatory response. Dislocation or fractures, 
that's gonna, as we mentioned, as it heals, can and cause some kind of arthritis. Excessive weight, um, which causes severe trauma and wear and tear on the joints. Remember all the way back to Barbaro, and he broke his leg, but he got laminitis in the other leg, and he got arthritis in the other leg because he had all of this weight bearing on the other leg. That's where the trauma was. Um, he had some kind of he had a degree of arthritis in the leg that healed, but he actually got also a lot of damage in the healthy leg because it now is all, bearing all the weight. Hoof deformities and problems with trimming and chewing can also be contributing factors, so you need to make sure you have a good farrier. <clears throat> you know, it doesn't matter what we're talking about, whether we're talking about obesity or gastric ulcers or hindgut ulcers or muscle um, damage or top line, inflammation, as I mentioned, Inflammation is good in short doses, but if you have too much inflammation, if inflammation is chronic, then it causes damage. And we so we want short-term infl inflammation to bring healthy nutrients to the joint, um, but we don't want it to occur long-term. So when a veterinarian, oh, sorry, that's right across my slide there. When a veterinarian is going to um, diagnose arthritis, they're going to look for puffiness, stiffness in the gait um, that potentially may improve when the horse warms up, a reluctance to perform movements that used to be done with ease, grating sound. Sometimes you can actually hear those joints, bumps and swelling on the extremities, um, which is the, that bits of cartilage or, or bone, stiffness after sleeping or prolonged standing. You know, obviously with inflammation comes swelling and heat and tenderness. Um, what do we do to manage it? Um, so it's important to be proactive and minimize joint damage or prevent this degenerative joint disease that's going to eventually turn into osteoarthritis. So when we look at nutritional supplements, principally we're looking at hyaluronic acid because we want to nip in the bud that inflammation to start, which, which can um, restore the quality of that viscous fluid in the synovial capsule and improve the nutrition to the joint. Regular exercise also, if it's tailored to the horse condition, this increases circulation to the joint. It also tones the muscles and a fitter horse has thicker, healthier cartilage covering those joints. So, we want a fit horse that does regular different types of exercise. We don't want a horse that's over-exercised that just does repetitive exercise because that is going to de be detrimental to the joint. So we don't want these horses to be stuck in stalls. The movement of walking helps to increase that joint fluid. You know, we've all gotten up in the morning and we're a little stiff and sore, but we walk out of it. And that is that joint fluid actually circulating around and getting into all the nooks and crannies of your joint. Altering the diet if the horse is fat. Um, do stretching exercises along with an extensive warm-up. It increases blood flow to the area and it softens up those ligaments that are stopping that bilateral movement. So when we come to osteoarthritis, you really are looking for a supplement that is a combination of your glucosamine, chondroitin, MSM, um, and your hyaluronic acid. But in your young horses, we don't have the damage, so all I'm looking for is really hyaluronic acid. The MSM is in small doses is good because it also has some anti-inflammatory properties, um, <clears throat> along with different types of glucosamine. But when we're feeding, so glucosamine does a lot of things. Um, it combined with hyaluronic acid and MSM can have some anti-inflammatory properties. So when we're feeding glucosamine to a young horse, we're tapping into that anti-inflammatory properties. When we're feeding it to an older horse, we're tapping into its ability to heal that joint tissue. So I want to touch on the new product, LQHA+. Plus. Um, it's the liquid joint supplement because we constantly are getting requested for a liquid supplement. So we came out with this liquid, liquid joint supplement. Literally, LQ stands for liquid. HA stands for hyaluronic acid. And I figured, well, I'll put a plus after it because it's got a little bit of other stuff in it. It's got some MSM. got a different type of glucosamine. 
So you'll notice on the Optimum Flex label, it's glucosamine HCL or glucosamine sulfite. Um, this is glucosamine N-acetyl because it works better in a liquid supplement. Hyaluronic acid at 200 milligrams per ounce. I said the gold standard is 150. So we want to bump that up. We've gone to 200. It's also got 250 IUs of natural vitamin E. <clears throat> the directions for use. Now it comes in a gallon size or a quart size, and it's just one ounce per day. You may, you, anyone that was on our last deal or webinar probably saw this because we did touch on this as one of the new, new supplements, but I'll go over it again. You know, we've got 200 milligrams of hyaluronic acid. That's synovial fluid. We've talked about how much um, its synovial fluid is important and how much hyaluronic acid is important in that synovial fluid. So let's put some numbers on it. There's about three to four milligrams of actual hyaluronic acid per milliliter of joint fluid. So that's where we get that 150 to 200 milligrams. Um, per day because that's that is helping to replenish that joint uh, hyaluronic acid. There's no chondroitin in this product. Now chondroitin is a great ingredient to help with that articular cartilage and that bone breakdown, um, but it can't be fed to other livestock and we wanted this LQHA plus to be, you know, we have a lot of people that sh show other livestock that really want to use a joint supplement and this product now can be fed to them whereas the OptiFlex could not. Uh, and the vitamin E, look, it's only 250 IUs per ounce, but let's say we're trying to feed 2,000 IUs per day to our, to our maintenance horse. Um, you know, now you, can, now you only have to look to getting 1,750 um, out of your, or, um, your feed or your other supplements because you're getting some out of this joint supplement as well. So this is a really neat study. I like studies that are done in horses, but this one was also done looking at this particular type of glucosamine because I know that some people are probably like, oh, it's a different type of glucosamine. Is it going to be as effective as, as the uh, glucosamine HCL? And absolutely, it works better in a liquid supplement, as I said. But we talked about those synovial cells and they sit on that synovial membrane and they secrete a uh, um, hyaluronic acid and they decrease inflammatory mediators. So synovial cell cultures, so they took, took those cells and they cultured them, the ones that line the joints and pro produce the synovial fluid, had significantly better survivability and lower concentrations of inflammatory markers and degenerative enzymes when treated with hyaluronic acid or even better, a combination of hyaluronic acid with N-acetylglucosamine. So if you put this joint supplement in with those cells that have been cultured, then it shows we have really healthy joints. We're decreasing the inflammation and we're increasing the health of that tissue. I usually say that joint supplements aren't preventative, but I have to eat my words here because using this combination of hyaluronic acid and N-acetylglucosamine prior to the inflammatory event, prior to the exercise. Um, both hyaluronic acid and when, so in this trial they fed either just hyaluronic acid or hyaluronic acid combined with the N-acetylglucosamine. And both of those treatments had a protective effect on the cells. Um, when you combine hyaluronic acid with N-acetylglucosamine, it had a greater anti-inflammatory um, effect than just hyaluronic acid alone. So LQ, when do I feed LQHA plus? To the young horse. What's the young horse? Eh, eight, maybe 10 and under. That is the horse that should get LQHA plus. When we hit that 10 mark, usually horses have got a lot of miles under them. They've done a lot more exercise. They've had a lot more wear and tear on their joints. Maybe you've got a veterinarian starting to recommend that you do some kind of joint injection or joint supplement injection and you're not sure, um, then that's when you should be switching over to the Optimum Flex Plus. Because when, when you start to talk about joint injections or even you know intramuscular joint supplements, then we're suspecting that there's actual joint damage.
Now, I feel like if we've got young horses on LQHA+, plus, we're going to push past that, you know, 10 or 11 age, and I think we can support these horses longer um, because we're really decreasing that inflammation and keeping it healthier. What does glucosamine do? Well, it has mild anti-inflammatory properties it, by infl inhibiting those things that cause inflammation, um, but it also supports cartilage production, and there's a lot of equine research on it. Um, so in L in the LQHA plus, we're really tapping into the decreasing those inflammatory mediators, and in the older horse, we want the support of cartilage production and um, break and stopping that cartilage breakdown. Chondroitin sulfate. Now it's not in the LQHA plus, but it is in the OptiFlex, and again, it slows the production and supports it, it slows the breakdown, but supports the production of cartilage. Um, improves joint comfort, it inhibits that inflammatory markers, and in conjunction with the glucosamine, um, that's how it's it's been shown to work most effectively. Again, this is all in the older horse. Hyaluronic acid, um, one study looked at 100 milligrams a day. <clears throat> study manufacturers recommend anywhere from 20 to 300 <clears throat> My gold standard had always been 150, but now with the LQHA Plus, I've bumped that up to 200 milligrams because I really believe that this is a way to decrease joint damage before we ever get to having to use the combination of ingredients like in Optimum Flex. So, MSM, um, eight grams a day, that's about 8,000. Um, and it can have some anti-inflammatory properties as well. There's really not a lot of studies looking at exactly how much is effective, so it's the amount that's in a supplement is a little bit of a guessing game. So if we look at the DAC options, we've got the Optimum Flex Plus, which it's for the older horse, that 10 and above, and it's a blend of the chondroitin and glucosamine and HA and MSM, a bit of vitamin C, all to help with the osteoarthritis and the actual joint damage. The LQHA plus is for the young horse. It's going to help feed and fuel that synovial fluid um, to keep the joints lubricated and keep them functioning. It's not necessarily going to be, you know, we don't want to be feeding LQHA plus if, the, if we know that there's cartilage damage, that's where we do with Optimum Flex. But if we just want to keep it healthy, like we do with a lot of young horses, LQHA+. Plus. Herbal Respond, now this is, I didn't talk about it throughout the presentation, but it is another option that DAC has, and it's a herbal supplement, but it does have devil's claw in it, which is uh, a banned substance when you're competing in sanctioned events. So I wanted to keep it short tonight because I wanted you all to be able to ask questions. So fire away any questions. I'm going to unmute everybody so unmute don't everybody. Call. Unmute everybody. So call. Hey Tanya, this is Susie. Yep. Um I have a question for you. Um if you are in a boarding situation and you have to make up buckets, um what is the longevity or the lifehood once that liquid HA comes out because a lot of my customers do board and they make up their little baggies with their supplements. Um, with the powdered high victory, it wasn't a problem, but um, what are we going to do about the liquid HA and using that? Can it, does it have a, a longevity period? Yeah, I mean, it will oxidize over time. Hang on, i got to mute everybody. It will oxidize over time. Um, and I know in the summer months out there, Susie, no, I, I would be caution, cautioning people to be making up their baggies on, on Sunday night and having them go all through the week with this liquid supplement in there. Um, ideally, if you bought a gallon, it's just one pump, so it's easy to put it in there, but um, it, one to two days max of it being out of, of, it being out of its container. 
Yeah, the, the smaller bottle seems to be um, what I've been selling right now, the little quart size, and it takes eight pumps. So um, I think that in conjunction with the vitamin E, how would you um, recommend that? Because I do have some customers that are questioning the use of the vitamin E in addition to the liquid HA+. Well, they work in completely different parts of the body. The LQHA plus is working in the joint and the vitamin E is working in the whole body. The vitamin E is working in the nerve endings. The vitamin E is working in the muscles, the tissues. The liquid joint supplement is working in the joint. So, and I, I want to just go back. The quartz, the feeding rate for the joint supplement is one ounce. And if you are feeding, using, buying the quart size, the pump is smaller, so it is eight pumps. But if you buy the gallon size, it's um, one pump. And I know that the sticker shock on the gallon size can be a little daunting for some people, but it actually works out to be more cost effective than a lot of other uh, joint supplements, a lot of other hyaluronic acid supplements that are on the market because you're only feeding one ounce a day because it's very concentrated. Anyone want to type in any questions? Any other callers want to ask questions? Anyone on the phone want to ask a question? How 